Hey, this is uh, our commentary to uh, season four of the Double J series. Mm -hmm. And I just want to throw this out there now. Um, you don't know about this. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of improvising this. If uh, if you think I smell like a restaurant, um, <laughs> namely Denny's, that's because um, earlier I was at a restaurant, um, namely Denny's. So um, <laughs> okay, just in case that bugs you. Is that what I spelled when I came down earlier? Probably. <laughs> okay. N namely Denny's. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's start off with the chain letter. Okay. Uh, oh, you want me to start? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Well, yeah, this is the um, first episode of season four, and it's the only episode where at the very beginning the title is at the bottom of the screen. We meant to do that for every other episode of the but season. But we forgot. But we forgot. <laughs> so it really stands out there. Uh, also, this is the only one with two laugh tracks. That's a new thing we have. Um, it's and a laugh track is basically for us. It's either um, uh, a pun or a smart aleck remark that they'll come up with. Um, it wasn't going to be in every episode until we realized that after how, how many episodes was it? Like five that we should keep going? Yeah, something like that. And once we did half the season, we figured we should do the rest of the season. Consistency. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, oh, yeah. Another new thing we have is um, uh, house transitions or time warps. Kind of runs by both titles there. Um, another new thing we have. Those uh, replace the, what would you call those, just the writing that says how many hours later it is? Yeah, pretty much. It's just like, yeah, time difference, showing that this is sometime later during the day or just maybe a completely another day. Unless it's a specific time, then we make sure we put that out. Right. I think we only did that once. Um, basically, this first episode, the first half of it was like a 24 spoof. Um, Which conveniently, this was the last season. I don't know if that would be conveniently, but... It's, yeah, I, I, I don't know. If we, if we wait another year, we wouldn't be able to do it. Um, okay, the chain letters in this were homemade. Like, we sat down um, and made two chain letters. We did, like, the... Um, uh, me scratching out chain letter and writing love letter before we actually did the thing where um, I first get it at the beginning. So we had to make two chain letters for that. Um, it, it took us like 20 minutes, just like maybe 45, I don't know. Well, it was like 20 minutes each letter. 20 minutes each letter? Yeah. We searched through newspapers <laughs> and just found the letters that We had to make sure we used the headline so they were big letters. Yeah. We didn't think of this till later, but I have a labeler, so it's like we could have just used that and just stuck it on a um, envelope. But we didn't think of that till after we did it. That's what Johnny's mailbox is written with. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, I don't know how we didn't think of that. Um, but I mean, it, it makes the chain letter more, more you know, realistic. realistic. There was a note that he pulls out. There was actually nothing on that. We just it's, kind of assumed what it was going to be. We didn't yeah. take the time to write it. We didn't care. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it wasn't shown in the shot, like. So we didn't think there would be any point in actually writing out a threat or whatever or on chain letters. So the theme song uh, has different background um, videos to it. Yeah, um, kind of an opposite thing here because Johnny scene just barely made the time, like uh, like filled his verse, and then mine went way over because that last scene, whenever I um lift up the giant icicle. Like, that's, that scene was just completely improv Um, and it went over, like, like almost by a whole minute of, like, what my verse really was. So, it's like, here's that. Go. Okay, so in the theme song, the sweeper I'm throwing out, that is the same sweeper that's in the shed and the resignation. Yeah. Fun fact. Uh, after that song, Tell Me Something Good, that was actually 
when he like screams woo, that was actually a voiceover. I was really doing that because I, don't know, I guess you just couldn't get it that high. I, I don't yeah, know. my voice kept cracking. Yeah. So we went downstairs for like 20 minutes and just recorded all these sound effects of like me and him just going back and forth, going woo, 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 like trying to get our voice high enough um, for the part. Then basically when we did the scene, he just lip synced it, and it was really my voice. Uh, doing that. Here's a deleted scene. When he was coming up from the driveway after he got the um, chain letter, we originally had this shot where um, he's like running up the driveway backwards holding the chain letter with a, a thumbs up because it says love letter and he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> so when I first opened the chain letter, when I say, wait a minute, it's probably from mom, I just kind of freeze for like a split second or so, there was supposed to be a flashback coming up after that about, what was it, all the time that show I'm like a mama's boy, that's, I say she loves me. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was, it was, <clears> gonna, throat> throat> it was gonna cut to the theme song whenever you mentioned that your mom thinks you're special, yeah. stuff like that, just kind of like a, like a tribute to your mom loving you <laughs> and stuff like that. And I, I yeah. think we we're actually gonna use um, scenes from your mom screaming at you Yeah. in, uh, like, in uh, the, uh, the Stanley Cup Finals episode. And the resignation episode, yeah, something like that. You're just gonna like throw that in to be stupid. Yeah, because it just kind of contradicts everything that you're like trying to remember. <laughs> Guess we didn't find enough scenes to really make a flashback. Okay, so the hockey stick changes positions numerous times throughout the episode before I actually like attack him with it. Like it starts out like right by the back door. I think it goes to like the shelf with all the books and other pens you know, and pencils, pencils and yeah, notebooks like, and stuff, stuff like that. that. So then somehow eventually it ends up in here. And do we do those scenes through a couple of days? I don't think so. I think we had that whole night. You had a lot of trouble um, talking to no one, too. On yeah, the phone. I, I can't do it. There's no one responding. I can't interrupt myself. It's just not natural. <laughs> uh, six minutes and 33 seconds into the episode, you could see the um, tripod at the right of the screen. That's where the previous shot was taken. We just didn't move it and didn't realize it was in a shot. Yeah, because we had the camera on the floor, so that uh, tripod was still over there. Then the very next shot, somehow we changed that, I guess, realized it was there. At the end, when we talk about putting uh, the chain letter in our camera guy's mailbox, we were actually thinking about doing that. <laughs> but we were going to make it stupid and, like, sign it at the very end so he knows where it's from so they wouldn't, like, call the cops or something. Yeah. This season was supposed to, like, start out with, like, shorter episodes. But I guess we have a problem with that because... Yeah. And at the end of the commentary, three, or somewhere in there, we mentioned we want shorter episodes, like, five minutes. Yeah. And I think we did that once. <laughs> Where actually it's in the five minute range. Yeah, and it's like this season just, I mean, the, it's like the first episode of the season just like 11 completely. Minutes. Yeah. That's like double what we wanted. Is this my mail? Yes, I'm sorry. I get no mail. Have you been stealing my mail? Yeah. Isn't that like a federal offense or whatever those guys in uniforms with handcuffs and like take people in say? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think your mailbox will fit that many chain letters. Is this my mail? Yes, it's your mail, and I am sorry. I get no mail. You've been stealing my mail. Yes, I have. How long have you been doing this? About a year now. Is oh, that's, that's your radio. Isn't I'm it? I'm sorry. Isn't that like a felony or federal offense that like the, those guys in uniforms with like handcuffs and lightsabers use or something like that? Sure. Dude, you don't do that! Oh, by the way, you're bankrupt. Okay, episode two. Um, Stolen wallet. Uh, yeah. So, well, for starters, a laugh track was accidental. Yeah, yeah. It, just the way I was thinking, you know, I'm reaching for bread. I'm thinking I gotta put bread on the table, and apparently he found it funny, so he put a laugh track to it. Yeah. Okay, there's a foreshadow of Scooby Drug Deal and Do, because uh, we knew that we were gonna do that episode like a while before this one. Um, so, and it was originally planned for episode three, so the one that would come right after this. But, you know, down the road, it was, you know, episode four because I think we couldn't get a hold of Matt or something like that. I, I don't know, something deleted. So anyways, uh, the chase scene at the very end, um, we had, like, a pattern written down on a piece of paper with, like, six different, like, variations of, like, what we would be doing. Like, what door he would be going into, what door I would be coming out of, uh, stuff like that. So we, we wanted to make it so we wouldn't repeat ourselves and go in the same door twice or come out the same door twice or something like that. And at the end of that chase scene... Um, Somehow I am pulling the frying pan that he runs into. Yeah. And I, I was actually, like, about maybe a foot away from the frying pan when I hit that. It was just like an angle trick. 
Um, all I did is I just ran up to it and just threw my head back, and we probably did that take several times because I was in pain by the end of it. <laughs> then just to make it look a little realistic, I flipped the pan when you would, like, start to fall. Yeah. Um, what we really did for the sound effect was we just slapped two pans together. Those magnifying glasses that uh, I pass out on, those aren't actually his. No, those are my dad's reading glasses. And the wallet that uh, I pull out of my pocket and give to him, that's not even his. It's not yours either. It's not mine. It's, that's my dad's. So <laughs> we just steal our parents' stuff or some of the stuff. Okay, we didn't steal it. We let them know, and they just don't really care. Yeah. Okay, well, Sean, you know, his nephew, who's made a couple guest appearances this year, he gave us the idea for doing the random intermission from Monty Python, that weird music. Yeah, uh, I don't know. He just, he sent us a video, the full thing over YouTube, the full 10 minute video, <laughs> and to see if we could watch it. Um, and I think he said we should throw it in an episode, and I guess we found it funny, but we cut it down to 10 seconds. <laughs> the outro is new too. Um, and this is the first episode it was featured in. A friend at school, Ryan, uh, suggested that we should have an outro as well as um, a time war pals transition intro type thing. Um, you know, like as well as you know, a theme song as an opener, you should have like um, an outro as well. So, The Ring is episode three. Um, there's, I, in every scene in this, I wear a different Hawaiian shirt. Um, it's it's uh, pretty obviously noticeable. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Yeah. We knew I was gonna be looking at some kind of pictures of toilets. So I googled like filthy toilets or something and found all those pictures. At the time my printer wasn't working, so we emailed them to myself and we went over our grandma's and printed off on her computer. And this made sure we deleted the search history so she didn't see it. <laughs> uh, in the scene where my mom uh, does that voiceover when I first wake up from like uh, the ring knocking me out or something like that, uh, she didn't know the camera was on whenever um, I was recording her voiceover. Because every time I hit record, um, she wouldn't say anything. So I hit record secretly. And then she did all her stuff, and I just pieced it all together in the end. And uh, when she watched it, she really liked it, so <laughs> that works out. Okay, so if you look in the background and stuff like that through, like, half of the scenes in this episode, you'll see some sort of Scooby-Doo. Like, there's, I think, a pillow in the background when he first enters the room looking for the ring. When I'm looking in my journal, there's a big Scooby-Doo blanket. Basically just more foreshadowing of the Scooby drug deal and do episode. Yeah. Uh, when I talk about how I got the ring, uh, near the beginning of the episode, uh, at a flea market. That's actually a true story. I was with my pap, it was probably about that many years ago, like seven, I, I really don't know. I'm just guessing. It's pretty accurate. Yeah, it, it's basically all I'm saying is it, it was a true story of how I got it. And I'm proud to say this is the only episode that has a reference to my toilet fling. We have another um, 24 reference in here. Um, when he's watching TV after he does the magic card trick or whatever, uh, he said, ooh, 24's on. That wasn't 24, we don't know what that was. And then there was a, a deleted scene that was taken down from YouTube, but it's on our MySpace. Go to myspace.com slash double J series. Was that it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's it. Episode 4 is Scooby Drug Deal and Do. Uh, we've been wanting to do that for a while. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, the song in it, uh, I Believe I'll Get High, parody of, you know, I Believe I Can Fly. Um, I wrote that, like, long before this episode was put up. Like, maybe, like, by a year or so. Maybe two, I don't know. Um, so we just, I just finally decided to, like, record it and put it in. Yeah. So I got that out of the way. Okay, yeah, I also do the ghost laugh uh, in the middle of the uh, recording session or whatever. Really, the only reason we did this episode is just because I could do a, um, a Shaggy impersonation. That's that's basically the only reason we did it. Yeah. Um, and we just found it kind of funny that his um, impression of Scooby Doo sounds nothing like it. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that was on purpose, though. Yeah, no, that was that was on purpose. So that's kind of what made it even funnier. Well, this is the first episode filmed on location. Um, we were at Matt's house in Whitaker. He did the logo for Nuclear Biohazard Cinemas. You can see there's another 24 reference to it whenever he's at the beginning uh, reading a newspaper. That's about the season finale of 24. Yeah. Um, so odd that we filmed this episode on the exact day the season finale took place. 
Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> so, so this is actually the first time I ever met Matt. A little, a little odd. <clears throat> about, about, you know, filming an episode over there, not knowing who he is, except from the stories he told me at school. <laughs> okay. That's actually all his equipment too, like the sound stuff. Um, Mike's <coughs> soundboard, um, all that stuff. Uh, he knows how to like professionally use it, so I, I guess that's one of the reasons we went over there, just to make it look like a realistic kind of studio yeah. type thing. Didn't, didn't he make like a whole bundle of cables leading to nowhere just for the effect <laughs> that we never got him in shot? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. He had, he had this huge bundle of cables on the floor <laughs> that were never even in shot, and just like a lead back behind a wall somewhere. It was it was never even used. The only place you could see them is when they're plugged in the back of the soundboard. Uh, but that's about it. <laughs> um, I think he was upset about that. I, I, maybe. He also uses a fake New Zealand accent in this. I don't know why. <laughs> he, he wanted to. So we just let, him, let him do it. The scene where we all find out it's Scooby is the villain. Matt edited the masking effect where I don't know how all four of us are in the same shot. In the same shot, then, you know, as ourselves, we pop in. Yeah. So he did all that, and what we just had, like, the camera record for 10 minutes, what we each just. Yeah, we just. We couldn't move the camera. We had to keep it in the same shot, and then, you know, we went and changed, and then we just got in the right positions, then he just, I guess, matched it all up. Yeah, I don't know how he does it. Um, and then at the very end, uh, he did the instrumental to the uh, song we did, uh, the Scooby Doo Where Are You theme. Yeah. So I was originally going to do it, but um, I guess he just said he'd do it, so I, I guess that makes yeah. it easier for all of us. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I guess by the time we actually got it all right, you stopped using your shaggy voice for the singing voice. Yeah, it just hurt the throat. <laughs> yeah, then I was trying to do the slow, like deep Scooby voice, but was, I can't do that low voice that quickly. Say hi, Matt. Hello. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mic check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Matt sounds like a freaking whale there. <laughs> he did. He still sounds like a whale. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's over there. I was just gonna say for me, so I could see the chords. I could print it off too. Are you gonna play it, or do you want me to do it? I can play it. Okay. He's gotta finish, doesn't he? Abstracted is uh, episode five. Um, at the beginning, we have a TBS uh, parody um, with uh, that show, Sex in the City, or whatever. I just spoofed it to Mexican Pity. Um, and then, you know, we also have uh, Johnny actually watching um, the Abbott and Costello Who's on First Routine. Um, he was actually watching the Naughty 90s, um, so that's like the audio that was really playing. Um, so, like greatest routine ever. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so basically this is like a Looney Tunes spoof, you know, I kind of run up to the window holding a ladder like Wile E. Coyote. He's basically the road runner, except instead of trying to eat him for supper, I'm trying to get back into my house. And yeah, then for the, on the clothesline, we took down the original one and replaced it with much longer ones to make it look like I'm actually stretching it way back to fly out of the window. I don't know where the logic in that is. <laughs> it, it, it sells the slingshot effect by, you know, putting a longer um, clothesline yeah. on it. So the smoke grenade I throw with the window to try and, you know, smoke him out of the house or whatever I was trying to do, gas him out, whatever. 
Um, that is the same exact type of smoke bomb we used in season one's 007 spoof. We only had like, I think two, so we wanted to get it on the first take. So we didn't want to have any, uh, you know, mess ups on that because yeah. if we run out, then we just kind of pretty much had to scrap the whole scene. Yeah. But we got it on the first take, which is yeah, pretty good. good. Like we had one slight bloop where the string didn't pull, or the little hook on it, the pull broke off, so we had to redo it. And then the um, surrender flag, the towel, that is a Pittsburgh Penguins playoff towel. We just taped it to a stick. Then we kind of branch off from the Looney Tunes thing and uh, uh, create a Mario spoof whenever he jumps into a tunnel. And uh, what we did for that is we like dug a hole about maybe three feet deep uh, to fit the size of like, what was it, like a 15 gallon drum. We stuck that in the ground and then we just spray painted the one side of it uh, to look green for like a you know, Mario tunnel. Yeah, so when I run in and just jump in, all I really do is just kind of duck down and I, I just barely fit underneath where the top of it is. Yeah, he was about three feet underground. That's why he was able to, you know, fit in that much space. It's an illusion. Um, and that's also the uh, the same area where we buried the ring. It was just a little bit to the left. Okay, so this is our um, Mario tunnel. Um, you know, just spray paint a little bit of a green, buried it up to like, you know, here. So yeah, somehow I fit into this. Except when we use it, it wasn't frozen in this shape. It was actually round. Yeah, there's frozen ice in there right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I just jumped in, just kind of went like this. Just kind of ducked my head down. So, like, while we were scripting this episode, um, that was right when this green screen came in the mail. That's a background. That's not a green screen. It's a nice blazing fireplace. <laughs> okay, sorry. This, th this nice background came in the mail. Mm -hmm. Neither of us have the software to actually use it, so we didn't use any of the effects for it for this episode even though we had an idea for a couple. Episode 6, um, Extremely Random <laughs> Short Random Videos 2, the sequel to Extremely Random Short Random Videos. Um, let's see, this is the only episode without a laugh track. Um, we wrote one for it, but we didn't use it. And it was the same scene, uh, it was, it was in, in the same scene. Where I come in and dump the water on him, yeah. we, we just cut out the beginning where it was in. Yeah. It's also the first episode to suggest that Johnny has a foot fetish. In the series, not in real life. I uh, just want to throw that out there. Also, those uh, foot fetish rhymes, um, they were like all written out when me and him were just like like shooting hockey back and forth. So that's noticeable in this episode from the very beginning. I, My sister bleached my hair. So. Um, at, the, at, at the beginning of that episode, uh, there's like a voice effect whenever he uses the inhaler that... Uh, Deepens uh, my voice. Yeah, Matt did that effect too. Um, uh, same as the one when uh, his voice keeps getting higher every time I hit him. Uh, he did that one. For the scene where um, playing a video game, the audio in the background was me downstairs here playing Mega Man 3 versus Needleman. You know, just to get some video game effect. Whenever I crack his neck, um, that was just me uh, cracking my knuckles. I, I, I was like a sound effect, and we, we each gave it a shot of that. <laughs> nice. But I didn't really break his neck. You came up with the whole screaming thing where I just chase you across like the whole like, hillside. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we eventually came up with I'm trying to tell him something about NASA. Then he just randomly interrupts me by like screaming his head off at me. Yeah. I I'd say that was the biggest highlight of this episode. Yeah, and at the very end of that episode, um my voice was gone. By the end of that night. So branching off that scene, uh, there was also one where I just whipped a can at like this little green shack. And that was originally just supposed to be like a little um, clip of its own. It fits like him screaming at me, chasing me around. And what he did, he just cut out the next part of where he would came into the shot, like turned towards the shack and screamed at it, then ran away. In the scene where Johnny's watching TV about them saying that the Penguins actually won the Stanley Cup, um, he throws the paper towels, and you see the paper towels come back. But if you look closely, um, there's a shoe wrapped around the um, paper towels when it hits his head. It was originally supposed to be he just throws the paper towels, and then a shoe comes back at him. But we kind of got like like more than we really wanted to do when the shoe wrapped around the paper towels and both hit him in the head. <laughs> Shortly after this episode marks the two-year anniversary, which 
Matt made a music video for. Yeah, it, it features a scene whenever I whip the little can at the Green Shack, like when I actually come into shot. Um, it was like a deleted scene that wasn't in the episode, but it was in that little uh, special music video. Yeah, YouTube has the audio muted on it, so if you go to our MySpace website, it's on there. Okay, so next is episode 7, We're Even Now. It's like our first thriller slash horror mystery uh, type of thing. It took us like a month to write this, because it's like a... Uh, it's not exactly on our style. Yeah. Um, we wanted it to be like a clever, kind of like twist ending type thing. Um, so, you know, it starts out with uh, Reese's Buffs, <laughs> which is um, a steroid-based um, <laughs> spoof off of uh, Reese's Puffs. Um, so Except anyway. apparently the steroids are now a cereal <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Now apparently we have a Double J Series merchandising channel. That's like the first and only time we've used it so far. So far, yeah. Um, and then it goes into Tylenol BM, and the music behind like both of them, Tylenol BM and Reese's Buffs, is um, the uh, elevator music from the N64 uh, Goldeneye. Okay, so with the Tylenol BM, apparently Saturday Night Live beat us to it with their own version of it, which is actually pretty different than ours, but we we already filmed and everything before we found that out, so we just kept yeah. it in. We're not going to cut it out. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a great scene. Then for the prescription bottle that Tylenol BM has written, I was just some empty prescription bottle I found in the cupboard. We just put a fake label over a real prescription bottle. Yeah. We just wrote it in Sharpie. <laughs> Whatever was in it smelled foul, because whenever I actually smelled it for the scene, that was a real face I gave. Perry is a real cop that we got to use um, for that scene. He's actually my uh, brother-in-law, so kind of got connections there. <laughs> yeah, also this is uh, the first time we got Jared in an episode. He's my uh, brother-in-law uh, as well. Um, so he did like the uh, uh, part where the uh, uh, letter uh, ransom note was being read. Okay, so the scene where I'm walking down the hall with like a weapon, it was originally going to be I walked down with a bat. Then while I think I have to remember that we put the old railing we used to have underneath the steps, so I grabbed one of those and we thought it'd be funnier. And with, with how big those things were, like I kept hitting stuff. <laughs> like it's obvious I hit the lamp by accident, I did that like twice I think. So this is our camera guy's first appearance this season. It's the first time we actually really gave him a character, too. There was yeah. one episode in season two where he just plays a juggler in the background. That was before he was actually our camera guy, though. We actually you know, gave him a personality and made him talk, and then had him run off with a um, uh, Fruity Pebbles. Generic or generic <laughs> Fruity Pebbles. It was like Fruity Bites or something like that. Dino Bites. We still have that bag in here. No one's finished it. <laughs> nice. It's, it's probably stale, so I should probably throw it out. No, it's a prop. Keep it. Okay, I'll keep the bag. I'll dump the cereal out. <laughs> okay, so this is episode eight, The Attic. The episode without a plot. Yeah. Um, I should probably throw this out here before we get started. Um, in season two, um, we had an episode called My Cousin is Trying to Kill Me. Uh, we renamed that episode... Um, uh, my cousin is trying to kill me, parentheses, uh, the episode without a script. And then in season three, we had the episode without a name. And now in season four, this is the attic, parentheses, um, the episode without a plot. So it's like we have a little trilogy going on here. Yeah. And each one is different in their own way because um, in season two, um, the episode without a script is the only episode out of this trilogy um, that features uh, special guest appearances, um, my nephews, Sean and Austin. In season three, um, the episode without a name... If, if that's also the only episode that doesn't actually have a real name to it, then in parentheses, the episode without a... And we got the attic and my cousin's trying to kill me, this one we didn't come up with a name for. Yeah, because that would just completely... Um, Defeat the purpose of yeah, being that, that's the episode the, without a name. So. Yeah, that's the whole reason we named the fact we couldn't come up with a name. So that one's different because that one's just a regular episode. Like, there's nothing really special about it. It's, uh, it's just its own thing. And then the episode without a plot is different because it's like uh, the 50th episode special. We were filming in our grandparents' attic for, like, hours. And we were, you know, obviously sweating, but, you know, got used to it. Um, and then... There was this one scene at the very beginning that we were just like 
screaming back and forth at each other. Yeah, it was the whole scene was pretty much an improv. We knew a little bit, but not much. So if you just watch the bloopers, you see that there's new lines in like each blooper. The flashback where we had uh, the bicycle tire thing, that was, um, we had that joke like scripted for a long time, but we didn't know where to put it, so. Yeah, so just, why not put it in the, with the episode that doesn't have a plot, so there's. There you go, that fits. And yeah. it's a flashback, so it doesn't even have to have a point to it either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so I misspoke when I say there's a huge sculpture of dog crap. What I actually said was a huge pile. Oh. So we just redid a voiceover where I, I think it was in this room where I said a huge sculpture. That's why there's just this obvious echo-like sound. And also when I'm complaining about how this, we're supposed to have a right to clean and sanitary act. What I was supposed to say was, this is America where we are proud of our God-given rights to clean and sanitary addicts. The Attic is also the first episode where we used a green screen, um, which Matt edited. So this is the uh, first time this we used this thing. So now it's been making a regular appearance in episodes after that. It was a cool it, prop to have. It kind of opens up, you know, more doors, like to you know, scripting and stuff. Like it lets us do things that we can't regularly do. Like, yeah. As far as you know, location. Yeah, and like stuff we like can't that. film in hell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is our 50th episode of the Double J series. Yay, terrific, all right, woo. All right, it's kind of a bummer because we have to clean out this attic, so you know, it's not really that good. You go oh. clean out an attic, a bummer? Dude, look, you suck at no, playing these events. All right, I, I there's nothing I can do. I cannot stand We talked about away. this. We agreed that gonna episode number 50 position. would be the one where no. we do the attic thing. No. 50 episodes from now, our 100th episode, oh, I am planning the event. Care. I am planning no, look, the event. No, look, I was talking look, first. No, look, I have the right away. Forget no, the camera. I'm not going to listen to you. Look at me. No, oh. Look at me. What? You, you listen, listen to me what? when I speak. You know what? You suck at these events. You're not planning anymore. I am planning all our events from now. Look, I'm so ticked off. I'm spitting. <laughs> okay, so this is our 50th episode of the Double J series. Woohoo. Yay. Okay, it's kind of a bummer because we have to clean out this bummer! attic. So, oh, geez, dude, what's your problem? I can't stand up all the way. That's my problem. Look, you suck at playing these events. Dude, we've been through You're this. Not planning There's anymore, nothing I can do. Suck. We talked about I this. I want to be able to stand no, up all look, the way in the next episode. Dude, I was. I'm gonna have a cramp I, on my back. And I, I was talking I'm first. Stuck in this no, position. no, look. No, yeah, no, I was here. No, you I had no room for me. First. Okay, you I had the right away. No, you just interrupt every single time I start speaking. Okay, and they all suck. Okay, if we get to turn your back. On me. Okay, so this is our 50th episode of the Double J right, series. Yay! Woohoo! Okay, it's kind of a bummer because we have to clean out this bummer? attic, so it's. You know, Dude, look. this this sucks! You cannot plan events! Ugh. You are terrible! Uh, no, look, we've been through this! Look, There's you nothing we can do! The There's attic nothing for I can do! In the look, middle of look, summer! Dude, it's no, we, we talked about this! No, way. we agreed that episode number 50 would back. be the one where we clean out the attic as a special. I was talking first! No, I don't care! No, I have the right away! No, I don't care! You were just doing labor. No, and no, 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 act. no, do your part, act. I'll try. <laughs> okay, so this is our 50th episode of the Double J series. All right, yay. Okay, it's kind of a bummer because we have to clean out this a attic. So it's... Dude, whoa, hello. Look, you What's suck the... at playing these events. Problem. No. I cannot stand up all the way. I'm getting a cramp on my back. I'm We've been through this. this. We've been through this. Shit. There's nothing I can do. Look, we agreed that I'm episode made. number no, 50 no, would be no, the one. We did the a special of cleaning out the attic. So we and we're just going to make the best of it. Like I was talking first, okay? I don't care. You have no room to speak. I had the right away. I am your cousin. No, I don't care. You won't bow down to my creative ideas. All right, next you know episode. what? If we uh, see anything that we me. like, well, hello, dude. Uh, you threw me, uh, threw a basket at me. All right, if we see anything we like, we get to keep it. So that's kind of cool, right? Episode nine, side effects. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit uh, complicated to explain. So just bear with me. So Sean gave us this idea. His basic plotline for it was, um, we go to a magic shop, find an orange juice potion. Johnny brings it home. I think he drinks it because he walks out of the room. Uh, and I come in, and there's a glass of orange juice sitting there. And at the end, um, you know, it ends up that, you know, he was never a glass of orange juice. And, you know, the whole episode, I was trying to, like, um, you know, make friends with the glass of orange juice because, like, I think it's him. And I was trying to, like, help him through his, um, you know, hard time. Um, also, this was um, supposed to be part of the attic because we figured we can't film... Um, in a magic shop. Like, we don't even know where one is, so that's just kind of a little far-fetched on our part. Um, 
So instead, we think it might be it, it might work out just as good to film in an attic and uh, find it in there. So we came up with a whole bunch of gags about you know him falling through the ceiling um, and finding all this dog crap in the background <laughs> and all this other crap. Um, it just took up too much time to make it the one episode, really. Yeah. So we just split it into two episodes. So like those two episodes, the attic and side effects were supposed to be one. <laughs> There's a scene in the attic where you could see him uh, stuff the Insta juice in his pocket because um, that was going to be used later, like in the next episode. Okay, so when you see in the background while I'm you know, explaining how I'm going to take the Insta juice, um, it, we purposely had the chalk line outlined from abstracted behind me just for episode reference. Matt did the uh, Scottish accent for, um, you know, him as a glass of orange juice, and um, at first we wanted it to be like a British accent. Uh, I don't know. We cycled through a couple different, um, you know, cultures, I guess, um, to do. Then I yeah. guess we just kind of settled on Scottish. Insta juice is really just a, a thing of um, mammoth smoke. Right after we filmed um, extremely random short random videos too, I went up to my sister's for a while and I bought all my 4th of July firework stuff up there, so I bought a whole carton of that stuff because I figured we'd use it for props, and we ended up going through like half of that for that one scene. Couldn't get the smoke to like cover me when I went down to like crawl out of the way and leave the orange juice there. It was, it was pretty ridiculous. Yes, and that's one thing, it's like they're at the store there telling me like, are you sure you want this man like bloopers? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, episode 10 was originally going to be called The Break-In, but was later changed to Intruder Alert. We had some huge delays for this episode. I'm sorry, with his computer crashing, you know, he does all the editing work, so... Yeah, that was a problem. His computer wasn't going to get fixed before, like, well after the month was over, and he had to get an episode out. So while he was editing over our grandparents' house, I would be over here looking up sound effects and stuff like that. Okay, so in the scene where we're knitting, right before we actually hear someone break in that big like blanket. Uh, that, that's something my sister actually made for my mom as I think like a Mother's Day present or a birthday present, something like that. Funny, so, yeah, I, I just take credit for it. <laughs> okay, now when I re originally wrote the idea for like the president flashback, we knew it was going to be in this episode. So and this was going to be like right where episode 5 was, but because we didn't have a green screen yet, that was still on the way. We delayed it till, you know, now to film it because we wanted the Oval Office for our background. Which has Reagan in it. Uh, you could see uh, the some, some guy random guy staring out the window. In the background. Um, we couldn't find just a plain background, so that was the best one we found. Right, and we couldn't find the real Reagan, so we had to settle for a picture of <laughs> him. In the president scene, we were gonna have it like explained about like how I got in, and it was gonna be something like I submit something to Make a Wish Foundation, like that I want to be like president for a day, or something like that. Yeah, and, and that's how that, that was the idea we came up back when it was going to be like episode five. So by the time we got to this, we completely forgot about that. Yeah, so it'll, it'll probably be a recycled plot or something. This marks the last green screen um, effect done by Matt. He wanted to go ahead and do more like 3D animation um, stuff, like for the series, like crazy opening sequences, and uh, he created our logo and stuff like that. Ryan M is the guy who is currently doing the green screen stuff now. Um, and Ryan B is our camera guy. So since this was going to be before episode 6 with the random clips about all the foot fetishes, so this was going to be the first foot fetish with the feet, five, fo fum. And then, you know, the random clips too, um, would just kind of pick it up with all the yeah. rhymes and stuff and then yeah, like so in the very next episode. Like we, like we said earlier about the um, we delayed the episode until we got the green screen, so we just kept random clips in its place. Yeah. We didn't want to... It, it basically just goes back to supporting what he said about this was originally supposed to be episode 5. Yeah. Um, then the scene where um, I turn him into a frog, that was going to be like a whole plotted out episode, like a full thing, because we had this idea where um, I, I change him into a frog and then I'm struggling to try to get him back to like human form. Like I tie him to a pole and try to stretch out his legs or something or something like that. And then I like attach his feet to the end of a car and then just drive away or something like that. See if he would like stretch out. Yeah. Uh, it was just gonna be like a full episode, but I guess since we already did side effects, 
Like he's that already been turned into it. something. So yeah, so kind of replaced it. Okay, so this is our camera guy's first like main role, character role. Yeah, down in where even now he just plays a guy who steals my fruity pebbles, generic fruity pebbles. And he was he was actually supposed to be camera guy on that. But yeah, this, this one, he's, he's not, not really actually. supposed to be known as camera guy. Yeah. Okay, and for the Asian dance scene, the music I'm dancing to is Liu Kang's tomb from Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. The end, whenever um, we took a whole bunch of sound bites from um, the Jurassic Park movies, um, just took all the, you know, T-Rex dinosaur roars and everything, some people think that um, the intruder was supposed to be just chased away by the T-Rex, but what we were going by was he was eaten by the T-Rex, <laughs> so it's like we'll never see him again. But the other way works just as well, so that way it kind of leaves it open for him to come back if we ever yeah. like, make a sequel to it. Right. Oh wait, I can see it. Okay, right there. I need that. Let me like double check. It's like right here, say. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. More taxes! <laughs> Slave! Yes, sir. How's Kenya doing? They're just fine. Good, good. Then I guess they wouldn't mind having even more taxes! <laughs> tax this, tax that, tax We there. have no authority over Kenya. You, you, you just can't go taxing them. <laughs> For the sake of our nation, sir, it's Independence Day, have mercy! Okay. I just don't regret so much. Oh! Take four. Okay. Um. More taxes! <laughs> Slave! Yes, Mr. President. How's Kenya doing? Um, they're just fine. Good, good. Then I guess they wouldn't mind having even more taxes. <laughs> we don't even have authority over them. You can't just go taxing them. Tax here, tax there, tax this. John Sir, it's Independence Day. Please have mercy. <laughs> For the sake of our nation. You haven't slept in weeks. <laughs> how, how did you even make it in the office? I never showed them my birth certificate. Episode 11, The Carnage of Daylight Saving Time. This episode idea was actually given to us by our grandma. <laughs> uh, she was coming down and... While well, we were trying to come up with a plot. plot. And we asked her to throw us an idea. And she said, do something like Christmas related. And we're like, we already did that. We have a Christmas special already. And she's like, hmm, all right, uh, what about a Halloween special? That's coming up. Um, and then we're like... Uh, we did, did something like, yeah, we just did that, too. Her third idea was, um, she was like, okay, so what's current? And then she just said, how about you base something off of, uh, Daylight Savings Time? So, we were just like, yeah, no. yeah that, that's, that's good. Yeah. What's, like, accurate about it is, it was actually uploaded exactly three weeks after Daylight Savings Time, so when it flashes back, um, to three weeks earlier, it's like on the exact day of Daylight Savings Time. Yeah. Um, and the newspapers that were used were from that day too because our grandparents saved newspapers from well, like the were. 70s. <laughs> <laughs> and so, we found a whole bunch of them up in the attic. Then a friend, Colby at school, mentioned that we should start off an episode with just like complete like carnage and just like all this crazy stuff going in the background, like buildings exploding on fire and stuff like that. So. Um, I went home, looked up on YouTube, you know, pictures of explosions and crap, and I sent them to Ryan, our green screen guy, and, you know, he spliced them all together and made a background out of it. So it's like, that worked. Yeah. And he's, Ryan is also the narrator at the beginning of this. In this episode, we uh, have a new character that we added, um, which is obviously me, but it's uh, Dr. Nasal. Um, he's basically just a... 
a doctor slash psychiatrist guy that uh, Johnny goes to. I, I can't help but uh, I keep thinking of um, Heath Ledger's Joker performance when he was talking to me. Shortly after the Halloween special, my dad had like a whole bunch of wood put up in the barn, so we had the right idea of why it's all there now. You know, then Sean comes along. We just had him like putting on the last two pieces and just saying, you know, that he's stocking up for the winter. It, it, I don't flows. know where we're going with that, but... Yeah. In the scene where um, he says he needs to study daylight saving time in like the dictionary, he walks through the barn and we have an angle, kind of a close-up of him, like saying he's got my his eyes on me or something. That goes back to the original take, where really he did the whole thing in one take where he just walked around the whole barn, came through the other side like two seconds after he left. Yes, yeah, so that's why we're supposed to be surprised that he came back so quick. While scripting, we came up with a flashback of where, after I say that he always takes my stuff, there's going to be a flashback of we're sitting across the table from it. As we're talking, he slowly reaches across the table and grabs it like a notebook or something, just slowly pulls it back as we're talking to him. Yeah, But, but we, we didn't, didn't want to overdo the joke about that, so we just cut it. Now, my nephew Cody makes his first appearance in this episode, um, and his scene at the end was filmed like a month before this episode was put up uh, because it was part of an alternate episode 11 that we had written with uh, um, my friend Anthony. Um, he was supposed to be in it. It was going to be a completely different script and uh, have Cody at the very end. Um, but something happened where he uh, never got back to us or something. He said that, you know, he would, uh, you know, try to have it open, but, you know, he never let us know. So we were kind of, you know, screwed out of a week and a half of, you know, filming and stuff because we had the whole script, you know, um, laid out. Yeah, so we're going to try and get it for next season. Yeah, so... And that's also why we were asking our grandma for a plot idea if we had to quickly make a new one. Yeah, so. So, and we had to rewrite the episode so that it still had Cody at the very end like because that scene was already filmed. Episode 12, Breaking the Fourth Wall. The finale. Season finale. Um, now this goes back to season two. We had a plot of like babysitting, and you'll be like a horrible job at it. Yeah, like for a while. And yeah. then after um, the attic episode, the episode without a plot, my sister comments on our Facebook about how we should have uh, my nephew Cody in it. Uh, so. We just kind of reworked our original plot a little bit. And, and we planned to have him in, like, an episode for a while. I mean, he was at the end of uh, the Carnage of Daylight Savings Time. We, he just didn't have a big part. Yeah. Because it was supposed to, like, you know, draw into the next episode, which is this one. The wood-burning thing, whenever I mentioned that, uh, what did I used to, like, enjoy as a kid, uh, I, I actually did used to like wood-burning. <laughs> I did it over, uh, my... Uh, our grandparents a lot. Yeah, that's actually the wood burning kit he used. Yeah, so there you go. I, I never, I don't, I don't think they ever told me I was old enough to use it, so. The house transition that's used at the beginning um, is actually stock footage that we never used last year because like we got some huge like snowstorm thing. So, like when we were filming this episode, there was really not that much snow at all, but you know, I just wanted to use um, some, you know, old yeah. house transitions. I mean, it was like, the right, you know, time of year for it anyway, so. Yeah. Um, again, Ryan edited the green screen uh, for this episode, and it's funny because it's only the third uh, green screen editing job uh, he's done. We just keep making these episodes harder for him to do because, um, you know, like, we throw in these tricky things like make the uh, uh, background a video or uh, make, in this case, uh, the... Uh, like two different layers Backgr of backgrounds. Yeah. yeah, we'd need like two different layers of backgrounds um, and make it expand and everything. And he actually said um, that it's bordering the uh, toughest thing he's ever done. <laughs> but, um, it's, it's funny because he didn't know how to uh, do that before we asked him to do it. So like, now he does. Okay, so there's a scene where I'm holding up a trowel and a knife with some drywall compound stuff on it. And my dad really does work with drywall, so that's where he got access to that. So I'm yeah, fun fact. Um, another new character in this episode, um, Miss Rasp E. Um, I, it's it, it's kind of cool because like it's like two new characters to the series back to back. Yeah. You know, still obviously me, but you know, yeah, it's just still another you know fun yeah. thing to use. Yeah, and somehow while Ryan was editing, he moved us like 
a lot farther apart than we actually were when we were filming it. So that's why I'm kind of looking off this way. He's looking that way. Yeah, we were really this close whenever we yeah. filmed it. Yeah, so he, he did it was, a, it was a pretty cool effect. I mean, like that's like another example of like uh, I guess the tricky stuff that he does with it. I mean, we didn't even tell him to do that. He just yeah. kind of. He threw me in the chair. Okay, there's absolutely no reason for me to be in this episode. We, we just kind of gave you some screen time. Yeah. So it keeps up with the fact that we both of us have been in every episode, like even if there's no real reason. We had an alternate uh, ending where like his whole house would be completely gone and he's just sitting in just the snow. snow. And then like I'd come up and say, you know, how was your day? And he was like, well, my house is gone. But, you know, other than that, it's been good. And he'd like, you know, ask me the same thing. And, uh, you know, I'd obviously just, you know, tell him how my day went. But we scrapped that scene because we wanted the uh, season to end on more of a serious note. So, you know, we had, you know, Cody and Jared leaving with, you know, the sad music. And we just kind of edited on that. All right, we're going to backtrack a little bit now and uh, talk about the uh, Halloween special that we uh, recently put up. Um, it's still season 3.5, even though it was uploaded, you know, like a year later than we really wanted it to be. So, um, it was put up in um, 2010 of October, supposed to be in 2009, but we had like, you know, a delay. This marks the first episode that uh, our technical producer, green screen um, guy, Ryan, came on board um, to do his first um, green screen edit uh, with the uh, hockey scene. Because the scene where, like, the guy in the background gets whopped with the hockey puck, that was actually him. And that was, like, a background video. It was going to be our camera guy, Ryan, doing the hockey scene, but he had, like, some kind of football game to attend or something, and we were on a deadline, so I just did it. It took us, like, what, over an hour to get just that one scene right? Because yeah. he was wearing a mask just in case his face was uh, able to be seen. <laughs> but, uh... It never was, so that mask was like blinding him, so we kept missing all the shots and everything. Yeah. So Ryan M, being our uh, special effects artist um, under technical producer, and Matt being technical producer um, as the 3D animation artist. So it's like uh, both technical producers, just kind of different category of it. Okay, so now we originally had the scene written out where we're exiting the bar and talk about how we should watch The Bride of Frankenstein to get more ideas on the experiment. Now, it's supposed to be, like, all serious where he's, like, stalking us and getting closer and closer. But he kind of improvised, like, well, he improvised all his scenes in this. Pretty, pretty much, much, pretty much all We gave him scenes. bullet points to follow, and he just, like, he'll use half of them, but then, like, the other half will just... Yeah, so you know, he made it into a complete joke, and it's obvious we're having so much trouble just because, like, just, you know, the corner guy, you see him just, like, flipping out back there. It, it's funny, he just kind of, like, makes it his own. It's, uh, yeah. So. And we didn't even have the end scripted about how like he's going to appear on the Larry King live show and talk about all his awards. Like, he, he just improv those whole... Yeah, and he came he came up with the idea of like how we keep switching positions and everything. So yeah. We just found it funny, so we just let him go with it. So. Yeah. Um, the song, uh, Life Life, that I was lip syncing, was from the Mel Brooks musical uh, Young Frankenstein. This officially starts NBC, Nuclear Biohazard Cinemas. The apron in the um, episode was actually something I took from uh, my school's uh, <laughs> chemistry lab. <laughs> so, it's uh, authentic. We're about to go on like a couple month hiatus, just because, you know, we've been doing season four since March and like, have had at least one episode up every month since then. So, we're gonna, you know, go on a little hiatus for now. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to, you know, do a season five. But as for the New Year special that we planned for this year, 2011, January, um, we decided to postpone that because, like, in filming the uh, season finale, uh, it kind of stretched on longer than we anticipated. We had, like, half the script written to it, but, you know, we just figured it's going to be late, so we didn't want it to be the only special where it sticks out, you know, as being the only special that's late. So, what this kind of gets a, it gives it a good um, pattern because every two years we have a special. Yeah, like 2008 was the Christmas special, 2010 was the Halloween special, like the official upload date, um, even though it was started in 2009. 
Yeah. And 2012 will be the New Year's special. So it's like every two years we have a, you know, like a special upload. Man, this will make the Christmas special like one that was up on time as planned. Yeah. And we wanted that in 2008. We got up in 2008. Yeah. Wanted the Halloween special up in 2009. Got, got up, up in 2010. 2010. Wanted the New Year's special up in 2011. It's going to be up in 2012. Yeah. So. And overall, it's still a good pattern that we noticed. So. Yeah. Okay, and for the upcoming Season 5, whenever we start out, we'll be using my new Canon HD camera that I just bought. So, yeah, we'll get some HD episodes up. And uh, we're also going to uh, want to upload them in widescreen. So, like, we want to make every season better as we go. Well, I didn't think we could top Season 3, but I think we just did. Yes, but now we have to top Season 4. Yeah. This has been Commentary 4 of Season, season four. 4. Nice. <laughs> Ryan M. is the guy who is currently doing the green screen stuff now. Um, and Ryan B. is our camera guy. Even Difference. though he's only in like two episodes. Yeah. Well, but, you still. know, still he's our official camera guy when he's over here. Your MC gets sidetracked easily. <laughs> <laughs> um, crap, where was I? <laughs> Bleached your hair in this one. It just sister bleached it, but well, sister bleached. What? It. Give that to Pappy. <laughs> Pappy or my dad? Your dad. That's my dad. Okay. <laughs> not your mom's Pappy. My Pappy <laughs> or your Pappy? <laughs> That'd be his uncle. Yeah. Your brother. My That's dad. Right. There's no Pappy about that. <laughs> Your pappy. <laughs> okay. That's our pappy over there. Oh, okay. <laughs>